Colts are going with Joe Flacco over Anthony Richardson this week. Yeah, man. Fix it. You are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Podcast Network. My name is Luke. I do Locked On Vikings. I'm here with Jake Arthur. He does Locked On Colts. And we're going to talk about this upcoming Sunday night flexed matchup that just keep the, the texture of it just keeps on changing. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll get into that as well as keys to the game and what the Vikings defense can do to pull out of its tailspin. This crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL or download the app and use code locked on NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. Jake. Hey man, how you doing? You is, how's it going over there? <laughs> well, I just got back from the Colts facility after some uh, kind of groundbreaking news over the last twenty four hours or so. Yeah, so something going on. Day. Yeah, <laughs> always so, something with this team, and it's always at the quarterback position. Right. So, uh, look, Anthony Richardson. I loved Anthony Richardson coming out. You can go find it, uh, takes on my show that I've aged terribly now. <laughs> uh, what? Like, so she, she, he is not really giving you much of an explanation, right? Like what's, what is their justification for, for pulling their rookie QB after 10 games? Yeah. So I think we kind of have to put some of the pieces together ourselves to, to just use the context of everything. We did talk to Shane Steichen today and he essentially said, you know, this is an opportunity for Anthony to just kind of, you know, hit pause and, you know, take a breather and, you know, no pun intended and kind of, you know, figure this thing out and make himself, <laughs> make himself Jake. better. Uh, meanwhile, Joe Flacco gives them the best chance to win. And uh, he also, you know, made a comment of, you know, he, it's up to him. It's his job to make sure, you know, the team knows that he is doing everything he can to put them in the best position to win. So you take, Anthony's performance and just how clunky and boomer bust the offense is. Um, you know, you you take the the tapping out of the game thing the other day, and you take the fact that you know the the two point seven five games that Joe has played, he he outplayed Anthony drastically, and the team was mm -hmm. the offense was more productive. Uh, so everyone has heard, you know, all the former NFL players who are in media now. Not a single player has said anything other than it was blasphemous. You know, Anthony as the quarterback taking him out for that for that play, and he is a very the, the tap out was blasphemous. Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, now that's not his own teammates saying that, but that's you know everybody in NFL media that used to play right. the game, former you know, players. No, yeah, I mean that's wild to me. Like yeah. I can't fathom it. No, it's if I'm a quarterback, you're peeling my corpse off the bottom or off, off the field. You know, right? Um, that's but, that's every except Brian Flores. Who, who chimed in? I mean, he was asked about this, and he's like, "I don't know, man. Dude ran around like twenty yards and had got hit by a three hundred pounder. I get it. Like, and Flores of all people, who is a notorious hard ass, yeah, uh, saying that. I, I think that does carry some weight. But it sounds like you agree with the move. Yes and no. I don't think I would have done it, but from Shane, if I'm Shane Steichen and I and I decide to pull this plug and make this decision, if he feared losing the locker room that they felt he wasn't like holding his quarterback accountable, then I get it. Um, mm. In terms of your long-term development and knowing what you have at quarterback, I don't think I would have done it because I do like the peaks and valleys were wild with Anthony, uh, but right. it was just 10 starts. Kind of the deal. And I will say he, he did not make the jumps you thought he would make this year compared to last year. I, I thought he was more of a pleasant surprise last year. You saw a lot more chaotic stuff going on this year. Now, with that said, I don't he I don't want to call him a scapegoat for this because again, there's so many things that go into this, but receivers haven't been winning 50-50 balls. They haven't been getting a ton of separation. There have been some outright drops. Communication with Anthony and them hasn't always been great. Some of that was going on with Joe Flacco as well. Uh, but I just think the fact that he's a young quarterback. 
who thought the tap out thing was even an option as a quarterback. Um, he, he didn't take a great deal of accountability for it after the game either. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's just, a, I think, a moment for the Colts to be like, okay, we're obviously not going to have this enormous ceiling quarterback out there. But at least with Flacco, you know what you're getting. We can run an offense through that. Like for them, it probably had to be pretty frustrating to not know what they were going to get from the quarterback position week in and week out. Uh, you know, you could have these 69 yard bombs for touchdowns, or you could make boneheaded throws. I mean, that's that's what they Shut bought into, it. though. Like they, they knew that. And that's I the guess... whole thing is is you would they knew that going in. And so to pull the plug on this 10 games in, there has to be more to it. Like when you find out that it is what it said on the box. Yeah. Yeah. I So look, I, I've actually been fascinated with this. So I've actually been putting out a bunch of my own personal content about it and kind of <laughs> not the Vikings. Um, so I have uh, actually a, a video on my Patreon page about this specific 75 minutes long about the last two Anthony Richardson games where I think I kind of get it. Mm-hmm. But I guess to me, do you believe them or agree with them when they say he gives the Colts the best chance to win? Do you think that that Flacco gives the Colts the best chance to win? Do you believe that that's the reason? And do you believe that they're even right about that? Because, I mean, this dude's like, what, 39? And he's probably in the 20s if you wanted to rank, like in the low, in the in the high 20s, if you wanted to rank him on QBs. Does he really give the Colts that much better of a chance to win? Uh, certain matchups, I think so. Uh, there, there were ones like the Titans game, for example, uh, with the defense they had. I, I said, God, you know, I really think they need Anthony in this one to win. It wound up Joe started that game and won, so I kind of you know mm. bit it there. But well, for the there, Vikings, there are then. certain yeah, there are certain matchups where if again I I told you earlier, you know we don't know if Bernard Ryman is is starting. That's their left tackle. They have a rookie at right guard as well because Will Fries uh, broke his leg and is out for the year. I mean Brian Flores is an awesome defensive coordinator. If if this defense is really showing its teeth and getting to Joe Flacco in an instant. Yeah, you need the guy who can escape pressure and keep the play alive in an extra second or two. I mean, it could be it could be a loss either way, but it could be the difference in giving up six, seven sacks and not being able to do a single thing or at least connecting on a couple of just big time plays. Uh, they, they've been very hit or miss, but I feel like with Anthony out there, they had so many, you know, long downfield routes and everything. There was no short to intermediate game. The only routine yardage involved in the offense was Jonathan Taylor running it. And when he was out for those few games, it was totally reliant on big plays. It seemed. Yeah, that's what really got me when I flipped mm-hmm. it on was like the quick game was non-functional. They, it was right. there. I mean, they did have times where it would be like a stick RPO or it would mm-hmm. be something that's supposed to be like a quick hitter, easy five on first down. And it was so non-functional, mostly because of footwork problems mm-hmm. uh, that for me, I kind of get it. And I, as a Vikings fan, like I think a lot of Vikings fans were like, ah, damn. <laughs> Flacco's going to put 400 on us because he's a veteran and he knows how to counter a blitz. And like mm-hmm. this defense, we'll, we'll get into it more, but this defense is so much better against young quarterbacks than it is against guys that, you know, been around the block a little bit and have seen, yeah. it. you know, they played against Wink Martindale back in 2015, you know? Uh, so I, I think it is inarguable, at least in my opinion, that Joe Flacco gives the Colts a better chance to win. And mm-hmm. I think I, to a point I have to respect Shane Steichen trying to do that. Hey, we're just trying to win the game in front of us, right? And if if it's just, you know, whether it's a, a one game benching to send a message about the tap out or whether it, I mean, he did say it's, it's not a temporary thing, right? Yeah, no, this is the plan for the rest of the year. Yeah. So it, it, it does make sense in a year where, you know, you're kind of on the cusp of AFC playoffs to not like you can't have entire pages of your playbook be non-functional because a quarterback can't do it. And does that mean, you know what, what the future of, of Anthony Richardson is now in Indianapolis is something I'm sure you'll talk about a lot on locked on Colts. And I look forward to listening to it. Um, But on the other side, the Vikings are also having some problems. They're on a two game skid right now. Defense is totally in a tailspin. That will be the next thing we dive into. Today's crossover Thursday episode of Locked on Vikings and Locked on Colts is brought to you by Five Hour 
energy. If you are like me and uh, sleep is a pipe dream, <laughs> you can uh, five hour energy may be for you. Also, uh, you know, for guys like Jake and, and me, we spend a lot of time on football. We spend a lot of, uh, of energy at the game, and it's a lot sometimes to power through a game day. That's why 5-Hour Energy has the Stand the Fan 5-Hour Energy Shot with a special flavor called Fan Fuel, the energy shot made just for super fans like you and us. The fans who are first in the parking lot for the tailgate and are last to leave after the game. That is is what things are for. 5-Hour Energy knows that no matter what team you root for, being a fan requires heart, soul, and a whole lot of energy. Whether you're prepping for the big tailgate or ironing out your jersey before game day, your to-do list is always a mile long. That's why the limited edition Stand the Fan 5-Hour Energy Shot is here to keep you fueled throughout the season. Available on 5-HourEnergy.com. Shipped nationwide. Thanks a million for making this crossover Thursday your first listen of the day. And uh, Jake, what do you want to know? I'm here. I'm your guy. Yeah. So uh, let's start with the the Vikings offense, of course. Um, Mm -hmm. I think it's a pretty well-rounded group. Uh, It's it's one where I think Gus Bradley's defenses have been able to take advantage and make plays of uh, offenses with like clear deficiencies, whether it's a young quarterback or they have no receivers or no run game. They've been able to take advantage of that. Uh, but they he did dial up an awesome game plan last week against Houston. Um, probably the worst. I mean, C.J. Stroud is in a little bit of a slump, but it's the worst game we've seen C.J. Stroud play against the Colts. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they really confuse guys up front with, you know, the, the stunts and everything. The pass rush was getting after it. Uh, I, I know, like you said, Minnesota was pretty banged up. Uh, just traded for Cam Robinson. So um, I, I guess the first thing is how are they uh, against pressure? I mean, because the Colts with DeForest Buckner back, like it's it's starting to pick mm-hmm. back up now. Why out to that's Lottie, probably DeForest a problem. Buckner. Okay, so that's something that could go well for the Colts. Yeah, so I, the offensive line is going to be where you're looking if you're trying to find weak points, right? Obviously, no idea what we're going to get out of the left side now. Cam Robinson, not even sure if he's going to play. And if he's not going to play, I don't know what they do for the game. Uh, I, I would guess that he plays, but they're being coy about it and saying, oh, you know, we hope we can get him to a full practice on Thursday. You know, we'll see. So as of this recording, I don't know, people listening to this might know more than we do, but we're a little bit too early right now. Uh, so we'll see if you get that and, and who knows what you're going to get from him. He benefited from a lot of quick game in Jacksonville. The Vikings like to be a little bit more long pocket, a little bit more deep drop back shot play kind of stuff. It's harder for O-line. So we'll see if he gets um, we'll, we'll see if you can get that kind of same performance. But it, what I saw in Jacksonville from him was encouraging to me. So I feel OK about it. The interior, though, Ed Ingram has taken some L's. Garrett Bradbury has taken some L's. So if the Colts can get DeForest Buckner isolated on those guys, we've I think last time we played DeForest Buckner put some pretty embarrassing reps on tape for those same two guys back in the 2022, the the big comeback game. Um, So I think that can be something that like if you're Gus Bradley, you're looking at that and going, yeah, let's just run that thing back (laughs) because that Mm -hmm. worked out really well, at least, you know, for most of that game. Um, But the Vikings offense otherwise has been incredibly explosive. The run blocking has been fantastic. Those guys have been a strength in the run. Um, and Aaron Jones, has, when when they have Aaron Jones able to hit the holes that they've blocked up, the run game actually has explosive potential. It's been really efficient. It's been really nice. Uh, and then obviously you have this like Sam Darnold phenomenon where he's actually playing pretty good ball being really aggressive, hitting chunks down the field, obviously Justin Jefferson, and then having two really, really fast guys around him in Jordan Addison and Jalen Naylor to either clear things out or just bust the top off the defense, get a big post route. Um, They've been very good at punishing small mistakes in the secondary. If your safety stays flat-footed for like a little too long, he can hit something over the top of that, and that was turned into a night. That exact thing turned into a 97 yard touchdown against san francisco and Mm -hmm. they've been doing it against good defenses but i I guess i have a question which is is gus bradley still like a cover three maven like is it still always going to be middle field closed or or have have things changed i I still think of him as as like a 2013 seahawk no that that was still his thing for a bit when he came to the colts and he's he's changed slowly but surely he's willing to mix things up a little bit more um it just it really depends on the opponent he has become more diverse 
Um, but you know, when it comes to the passing game for Minnesota, is does it look like TJ Hawkinson's going to be back? Yes, he he should be back. Um, okay. He's been activated. He's expected to play. Yeah, okay. and that changes so much about the way that they it run does. the ball. Uh, as as well as it changes a lot about the way that they try to open up Justin Jefferson because hitting TJ Hawkinson underneath is the second thing in the progression. He's a really good route runner. So if you just kind of like stick your strong side linebacker on him and, and like he's going to run choice, he's going to get open. So it, it it does create like another issue. You just have to block it up. I could see Hawkinson being, I mean, I know Justin Jefferson is everything, but I could see Hawkinson being the leading receiver in this one. The I, Colts I could see linebackers him in the whole time too, you know, like that, that possible if, I, if they need him to do that for sure. sure. But the, the Colts linebackers have just been uncharacteristically. I, I don't want to say poor, but you just don't know what you're going to get with them week in and week mm-hmm. out. Like these are, these are guys who they put up high tackle numbers, which looks great, but uh, they struggle to get off blocks. Like there was, there was a play last week where Joe Mixon had like a decent touchdown run. Um, you know, EJ speed gets knocked down on the ground and then Zaire Franklin is too late to try and get to Mixon and kind of trips over speed while he's on the ground. And it's just like mm-hmm. the, the defensive line is playing really well and they have, you know, Grover Stewart up front to get push him and DeForest Buckner. That's supposed to create lanes for the linebackers to, to shoot through the gaps and everything. And it's just not happening like it used to. Uh, and then neither of those guys are all that great in coverage either. Uh, Jalen Carlisle was their rookie linebacker who is supposed to be their coverage linebacker. Uh, he's now on IR, uh, fibula injury and a shoulder. So they don't have any linebackers who are playing meaningful snaps right now who do particularly well in coverage. We saw, you know, Cole, Cole Komet was a good example of someone who kind of railroaded the, the Colts defense. Talented tight ends play like talented tight ends against the Colts. And then, even if guys didn't have huge games, they make really opportunistic plays. Uh, you know, um, Houston did it a, a good bit last week. Johnny Smith had a huge game a couple weeks ago. So Hawkinson, if he's out there running routes, I would imagine he's going to be a big problem for the Colts. Well, and, and that's the if, because with question mark, we'll call it right now at left tackle. Not sure what you're getting there. Not sure what you're getting on the inside. Um, having Hawkinson be part of the protection chip, then maybe, you know, Brian O'Neill can go help with the Forrest Buckner. Like that might be something that they do. And then Hawkinson will be more of an outlet. Uh, and then they might just, they, they might attack those linebackers, not just by throwing a tight end out there, but with play action mm-hmm. and trying to do, you know, rollouts, flood concepts, that kind of stuff, just try to suck them up a little bit, hit, hit a basic over the, over the middle. Um, and, and that's, I think whoever wins the middle of the field in the passing game wins this game. Because that's been with Brian Flores' defense, that has been like the primary issue. Um, is that they do a lot of middle of field open coverage. It's a lot of quarters, a lot of Tampa two, and everybody's been able to hit whatever your favorite way to get to some kind of middle of field throw. Whether it's a little glance post, whether it's dagger, whether it's you know drift, whatever you like to do. Um, you can catch linebackers getting a little greedy on the checkdowns, getting a little bit too close to the ball, and you can throw the ball over the top of them as long as you have a quarterback who can hit over the middle. And I guess that's my my question about Joe Flacco is when he does go deep, are these you know post route balls or is it all kind of go routes in his classic like let's go under throw a DPI kind of thing that he's been doing since about two thousand nine? Well, the when he goes deep, at least with the Colts so far, a lot of it's been outside. Um, Now, Josh Downs is probably their best way to utilize that middle of the field because Michael Pittman Jr. is just banged up right now. Like he can. He did not look right. No, he's he's got lower back issues right now. And he came out and he helped beat Tennessee. But he is just not looking like himself right now. But Josh Downs, his bread and butter is like these option routes. And uh, him and Joe Flacco do appear to be on, on decently the same page. Uh, in the the few games that Flacco has been out there. So that might be a way for them to exploit the middle of the field. The tight ends are non-existent. Uh, and then when it comes to downfield shots, which it would, it'd be huge for the Colts if if the Vikings can give a little bit of that up. But Alec Pierce is their man for that. And then A.D. Mitchell is just the ultimate wild card. I Each week, I think we're getting closer to A.D. finally breaking out. He is a really unique, great route runner, gets, gets open, but... I don't know if it's like field awareness or whatever it is. Like he has not been on the same page with either quarterback this year. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, some He's, gaffes. Some didn't get your foot down. Yeah. Last yeah, last week I'm sure you saw like he should have had a yeah, touchdown I saw that catch, play. but didn't really position himself near enough inside the the boundary. And I think we're getting closer. The misses are not as far away as they used to be. And maybe this maybe this is a week for it. You never know. Well, we got to figure out what's going to happen in this game. The whole nation is going to see the the issues of both of these teams laid bare. And, and as I've said a lot on these crossovers, it probably comes down to who does the best job of fixing their own issues in the game and who does the best job of kind of papering them over probably gets to win. So let's see if we can figure out what's going to happen. That Today's Crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Whether you want to go bet on this game, I think at FanDuel, last I checked, the line was Vikings by five and a half. So if you think that the Vikings can beat that, or maybe if you think the Colts, five bucks on it at FanDuel.com, and you can get $150 back in bonus bets if you win. And the, and the FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL. So let's say the Vikings get out to a big lead and you think they're going to collapse. You would perhaps have reason to believe that. Uh, boy, we sure have seen some comebacks in this matchup. So if you think something like that could potentially happen, you can go get the FanDuel Sportsbook app. They give you live play-by-play, -play, latest stats, all the up-to-date information you need to make the decision that you want to make. Once again, put down a $5 bet on anything you want, and if you win it, you get $150 in bonus bets. That's 30 to 1 odds on anything you want. Whether it's 30 to 1 or minus 1,000, you can get $150 in bonus bets as long as that thing wins. That's at FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. This episode is also brought to you by Built. Earn points by paying rent right now when you go to built.com slash locked on NFL. Built is breaking ground as a neighborhood rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. Every month, pay your rent and watch the built points roll in. You can use points to jet off on a dream vacation, put them toward a flight or hotel stay with 500 plus airlines and 700,000 plus hotels and properties. You can also use your points to big book fitness studio classes, redeem them toward a future rent payment. They're designed to meet your lifestyle. Pay rent hassle-free through the Built Rewards app. Your rent game just got a major upgrade. Built points have been consistently ranked the highest value point currency by the points guy and bank rate. So if you are renting and you're sick of feeling like your money is just going down the toilet, check out Built and get something for all that money you spend on rent. Earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash locked on NFL. That's J O I N B I L T.com slash locked on NFL. Make sure to use our URL so that they know we sent you. Joinbuilt.com slash locked on NFL to start earning points with your rent payments today. So, Jake. What do you think this this and you know I, I don't know if you're like a score predictions guy I personally mm -hmm. am not I'm more of a keys to the game kind of guy what's sure. this thing coming down to so for the Colts I they have been so reliant on the big play whether it's Joe or Anthony um, I'm looking for them to just be like a, a functional offense that can string a drive together they get so behind early in in the down you know in the down to distance. I think they were like two of 13 last week on third down because they put themselves in such poor positions. Uh, penalties have been kind of a recent issue. I think at six last week, obviously, you know, incomplete downfield passes and just this and that. So hit the layups. Uh, you would like to see the short and intermediate passing game exist whatsoever. I know Pittman sure. is banged up, but there is a Probably way better with to... Flacco than it was because yeah. Richardson couldn't execute that stuff. But I feel like, like right. Flacco can throw stick. Yeah, like keep keep a drive alive. Like a, a, a five yard comeback is fine. You know, like there I think veteran quarterbacks are are more willing to just take what the defense gives them. So string a couple positive drives together, get at least, you know, two or three touchdowns on the board, hopefully, and, and hope your defense can do enough against this really high powered Minnesota offense. There's that. Um take advantage of your uh, of your opponent's weaknesses, like the Colts defensive line is playing at a high level, especially now that DeForest Buckner is back. You know, Dio Dangbo, Layatu Latu, DeForest Buckner, uh, Quiddy Pay. Like, these are all guys who can get after the quarterback or at least make Sam Darnold uncomfortable. 
move them around. Uh, so just that stuff. And then got yeah, on defense in the secondary, like you're, you're facing an uphill battle against these really, really good pass catchers. Just be in the right spots. You're probably going to get beat a fair amount of times. Just be in the right spots. There's a lot there. I think this one comes down. I, I like the penalties point. The Vikings have had a horrible issue with pre-snap penalties. Yes. It's got nothing to do with the matchup. They just sometimes they can't get lined up. Uh, it's been really embarrassing. So that they, they've had maybe some of that was just Thursday night kind of jittery stuff. It's just you know, the nature of Thursday night football stuff gets sloppy, but it's, it hasn't just been that they've also been up against the play clock a bunch. Like they just, their operation from kind of between downs has been really slow and sloppy. So if they it, like whichever team can figure that out might have a better shot here, but I do think it's the team that can get out of those long yardage situations. Mm -hmm. And especially when the Colts have the ball, this is this is really, I think, how you can tell who's going to win this game, because the Vikings in the last couple games have been phenomenal on first down, dreadful on second down. They've got they'll get you to second and 12 and then let you convert it. And they've actually in the last two games with this defensive meltdown, they haven't even gotten you to third down. I mean, you just drive down the field first, second, first, second, first, second, first, second. Uh, and because of that, it's like warping the snap counts of the like of, of Dallas Turner, who's a rookie edge who comes in as part of the third down package is his primary job right now. And because they aren't on third downs, he's not even playing. No. So, like It's like that bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you can get to a second and let's say there is a pre snap penalty and it's, you know, Colts second and 15. Those are more convertible than you think. Uh, especially okay. with somebody like Flacco who can just see where the hole is on a defense and you have it. And if you can run a reasonable route, find the hole in the zone, like it ain't that hard as if, if the Vikings can't get pressure again, which they absolutely utterly failed to against a banged up Rams O line on Thursday night, if they can't find a way to get pressure again. And it's Brian Flores. Uh, you know, you, you have to hurry that process. Otherwise you're going to be you know, second and 14 will be no problem. We'll throw a 25 yard chunk right over the middle. Whoever can figure that out, if you, if you can start getting out of your second and longs or we can start not letting you out of your second and longs, I think whoever can figure that out is this one feels like it comes down to to that. But it, like as much as the Vikings are favored here, I, I've seen this season too many times to not look at this and go, oh, the Vikings can lose any game right now. They could probably win any game. I mean, they've beaten teams that that are seen right now as Super Bowl contenders, uh, but they can they could probably lose any game, too. Yeah, the so just like the the same you said with the the down and distance, the Colts defense. If you got third and ten, third and fifteen, they're giving that up too. Uh, really? Likewise, yeah. Likewise, they they have been a really good offense at like third and fifteen. But it's like, why are you getting yourself into that hole in the first place? Like, let's not be awesome at third and fifteen because it means that's happening to you in the first place. Uh, so offensively, Joe is great on third down, so he could get out of those, but just the flip of the coin as well. Like hmm. if you guys, it if, be if swingy the, then. yeah, this, this could be a really interesting game. It, it could be, it could be a, a 17, 10 game just as easily as it could be like 30 to 27. I, this it, feels like two really unpredictable teams. Yeah. And it feels to me, I think I, I said this before the last game and then it turned out to happen in an extreme case, but it kind of doesn't matter who gets an early lead. I feel like, yeah, like it's swingy enough where, if somebody's up 13 to zero at the end of the first quarter or something like that, or some nightmare happens and it's 14, nothing. Um, I don't know if they got 33 in them again, but if like <laughs> <laughs> that, that one might be special, but uh, I, I think if there is like, if either team jumps out to an early lead because of some random stuff, it does feel like one where like absolutely some total like snowball meltdown quarter is is in the cards for either team mm -hmm. and i i like i don't see this one being ah well third quarter two score lead it's over like i don't see that being the vibe um at least not for i mean i'll be i'll be nervous till triple zeros i always am but it feels like it might be a swinging game with momentum shifts and even if there is a big lead you'll you'll have the announcers going well you know they're about to make you know one more score and they make a game out of it and then they do yeah whoever it is yeah, it, and I think this is two crossovers in a row, which is, is really damning on the Colts offense and I guess Shane Steichen, but it's only until now that I feel like I'm saying the name Jonathan Taylor 
that's their best offensive player. Like, I, I think mm-hmm. he's the ultimate X factor. I think he'll be more involved now that Joe Flacco is in there, uh, which is odd because you would think with Anthony being in there, you would want the running back to be his best friend. And Jonathan's still been productive. He's running for 100 yards and everything. Um, but if they're self-scouting and reevaluating, and they obviously felt the need to change quarterback, I would also change your offensive philosophy to be Jonathan Taylor centric once again, mm. like it used to be like, that's your best player. You have this really expensive offensive line. That's really good at, at run blocking, whether it's zone or gaps, especially, you know, they they've done some really good zone stuff. Uh, but I mean, Flacco, Flacco can capitalize on an effective run game leading into play action. Like he's also a guy who I could see them having him throw 40 times a game. Hmm. Yeah, like you, you can st- even though he's he's older, like you can you can do that with him. Yeah, it, it's so interesting. Both of these teams are in this like state of flux and especially with the Colts. And like there's also this whole behind the scenes, like is the organization OK? Locker room culture questions and all of that, where this one, whoever loses this game will feel like they're just in the worst tailspin in the league. Like it feels a little bit like the stakes are there and whoever wins this is going to be, oh, okay, we can be okay. okay. This is a season, you know, and whoever loses this is is like just in a full hair on fire panic. But uh, I always encourage Vikings fans to go check out Locked On Colts. Go listen to what's going on. Do a little oppo research. And uh, Colts fans, you are welcome to come uh, listen to me. You can go check out my video at patreon.com slash Luke Brown NFL about uh, Anthony Richardson if you're into that. Uh, I did I'm kind of from a scouting the Vikings perspective, but I think Colts fans might still be interested in that. Uh, and Jake, tell my people where, you, where they can find you. Absolutely. You see me there at Jake Arthur NFL. Um, as far as we go, I am I'm in the facility each day. So I try and generate as much video and, and bring to fans what's being said by players and coaches and everything. Today was a very busy day. Uh, we talked to Shane Steichen, Anthony Richardson, Joe Flacco. Uh, so the, the Locked on Colts YouTube page, I think gives you great bang for your buck if you're a Colts fan. And again, if you're a Vikings fan and want to do some recon on the opponent, I I think we got what you're looking for. Excellent. Jake, thank you so much. Enjoy the game, man. You too.